drawn up a list of modifications and fixes and additions to my Woodland Mills sawmill. I'd have had this video out a long time ago, except I keep thinking of things I forgot to add, and new problems come up, or something else breaks. The very first thing I did was remove these three bars in the sawdust exhaust chute. This wood I cut, alder, even though it's cut in the winter time, it's still very wet. The sawdust clumps very badly. It fills up the entire box here. The only purpose I can see for those bars is legal liability. Presumably, your neighbor kid could stick his hand in there when you were sawing wood. I don't see any practical consideration for leaving those in there. The legal liability, however, is something you might want to consider. None of these things I've done are suggested or recommended by Woodland Mills, unless I specify otherwise. These are all on my own. I realize I'm exercising the option of proceeding at my own risk. If you do any of this stuff, you will be too. The second thing I did was change this hole here into a slot. The way these things come, you have to unscrew this knob completely, set it down somewhere, hope it doesn't fall down in the mud and the sawdust, and then screw it completely back in. I changed it to a slot. Now I loosen it a few turns and the door is open. I would not be surprised to see that particular modification show up in a production line. If you have the extension, the blade guide extension, the water outlet is a little zerk fitting and if you don't have the water flow turned up fairly high so it pees clear out to here, it'll just dribble somewhere down here. I don't know if it gets to the blade. So adding a little bit of tubing, just a little because if you get too much you'll be knocking it off on wood. Even if the drip is very very low, it drips on the blade. This blade guard if you've watched my earlier videos, you've seen the entire thing. You've also seen what happens to it when the blade jumps the wheel and runs into it. I first thought that this conflicted with the blade and caused the wheel, the blade to jump the wheel. It's not the case. It was the blade jumping and <laughs> tore this up. I cut the bottom out and cut the back off. All that's left is this strip, which I've got bent out so it makes contact over here and stays away from this. Even though I've done that, when the blade jumps, it catches back here and puts a nice S-curve in that. But it's aluminum. It's easy to straighten. I considered operating without this guard on there. Most of the time, I'm cutting small stuff. I have the blade guide all the way out. But I decided I need this bright yellow guard because I don't walk behind the machine most of the time. I walk in front, which means I'm near the blade. I'm in front of the blade. And I know I'm absent-minded enough to reach down, move something out of the way, pick off a lump of dirt, something like that. I'll keep that guard in there. Oh, what else do we do over here? Th oh, throttle location. This was turned around this way, which is works fine if you're walking behind. But if you're walking in front, I find it a little easier with the throttle handle turned around in this direction. Those are the only modifications I've made so far. A couple of things I've had to fix. And I've seen this one on another video, another operator. These cables keep sawdust cleaned out of the groove in the wheels and also keep sawdust off of the rails so you get a smooth ride with no lumps. This one was so far forward that this bottom cable was not on the wheel, it was down below the wheel and off the track. All I had to do, loosen this bolt, slide the cable back and tighten the bolt again. That was easy. The uh, one I saw, another user had to do that same thing. It was the same wheel. Perhaps it's the same guy on the assembly line. 
I did them both. I'm having a little problem with tracking. I'm not resolved this yet. I'll have to talk to Woodland Mills again. The blade on the driving wheel is too far back. It's supposed to be 3 8 out in front. It's supposed to be a millimeter proud in back. It's more than that. Uh, I don't know if this is contributing to my occasional throwing a blade or not. I've got this one adjusted a little bit farther back to more closely match this one now and so far I haven't thrown a blade. Teeth have to be in front of the wheel. They cannot be riding on the tire or in a Woodland Mills case the drive belt. These don't. I have the proper clearances here. We'll see. I don't like throwing blades. It scratches the paint and damages the blades considerably. I haven't resolved tracking but I will. The Blackard says do not adjust this wheel so I've been a good boy I haven't done that yet but boy I'm tempted uh, I'll talk to Woodland Mills first those folks are extremely helpful extremely responsive you'd be an idiot not to take advantage of their knowledge now the big problem has been and still is the winch when you crank up you hear the ratchet because the clutch is not doing anything. It's seized up as it should be. When you turn the other way to go down, clutch discs under compression provide the friction to keep this from falling like a rock. Mine got progressively harder to crank down until it was taking 25 pounds of pressure at the end of the crank. And uh, I've had my shoulder rebuilt been a long time but uh, it's, it can't tolerate that kind of rotation so um, Woodland Mills said they send me a new winch I got to messing with this one took it apart to see how it works when this is all the way down the clutch is free as soon as you start to crank up the shaft is threaded and it compresses the discs until they won't compress anymore and then the winch lifts the weight and overcomes the friction. To crank down, it should be about the same force. The weight is already on it. All you have to do is counter the friction it had coming up. Mine got so tight, 10 pounds to crank up, 25 to crank down. As I said, they said they sent me a new winch. I took this one apart to see how it worked and realized I can lubricate these discs. It's not going to hurt anything. It won't make it inoperative. What's, what's to lose? So I, I first I drilled a hole in the bottom of this piece right here. So one, rain won't get in, but I can put a spray can nozzle up there, spray in more silicone. And that works fine. You crank it all the way down to free the clutch. So there's space in there, spray in silicone, and you're good for a short time. I'm going to try WD-40 next. I had told Woodland Mills, I said, I've got this one fixed. Don't waste money sending me a new winch. And they said, well, we're going to send it anyway. I don't know where it is. They don't know where it is. But now I would like to have that winch because I'm not sure I'm going to be able to fix this. It needs another shot of lube before I work today. Okay, we'll digress now and talk more about this winch. I spent hours taking it apart, studying it, trying to figure out how to adjust it. First time I've ever used this tool. Now, how is that adjusted? It turned out, and it should have been obvious, there is no way to adjust it. It's self-adjusting. Okay, this and this turn on this and there's too much friction there it looks like this might turn off well look at that 
look at that. What I just did was take up that slack there. This is threaded. The small gear is threaded, not the metal disc next to it. So this is the lock nut for this. So if I back this off of here, I put it in the vise. I realize now, as I edit these videos, that that disc yeah. is stuck on the shaft. It should move back and forth freely. Okay, it took up the space. Oh, look at that. We completely declutched this. My question is, though, why did this get gradually worse as I was using it? And that is still a good question. I'm going to take this thing apart again. I kept fiddling with it, analyzing it, trying to understand exactly how it works. Oh, well, that slides on the shaft. That is supposed to slide on the shaft. I finally figured that part out. When you begin to crank up, that little gear does not turn. It moves on the shaft on the threads until it locks tight against the discs and the bushings, and then it begins to turn and lift the sawmill head. Cranking down. This is holding it up. I have no idea how the hell you adjust this. I realized eventually that it's self-adjusting. There is no adjustment needed. The winch story continues, but that's all I can stand for one sitting. It's probably all you can stand too. So what else have we got? That's it except for additions. I built a saw buck. Pretty much a standard X-frame saw buck except I doubled all the frames. 16 inches apart. So now I run the chainsaw between the frames <laughs> and into them. Between the frames and I end up with 16 inch firewood that's still here. I don't have to pick it up off the ground except the odd piece it falls. It's all supported by the X frames. So I scoop it up in my arms, throw it in a wheelbarrow and stack it over there. Filling the engine with oil is messy. So I bought a pump and now it's easy. The other additions, oh, I'm building a shed. I have to put a tarp over this every day when I'm finished with it. Building a shed, I need to go up and get some more trees. Some big enough and long enough for a 20 foot beam across the front here. The first thing I bought was a cant hook. Now Woodland Mills charges a hundred bucks for them. So do the other sawmill manufacturers. If you can go on Amazon and other places, find them for about $50 or $60. This one was a Timberjack. It still is. It's got a, uh, a T that comes off this here. So you can grab a log and tip it up off the ground to saw it. Um, this was the same price as a cant hook, so I got two tools for the price of one. Uh, the reason it's called a cant hook is you can't operate a sawmill without one. Sorry. The other additions, I said early on, I see a battery powered blower in my future. I don't like cleaning sawdust out of the mill with a brush in my hand. There's a sharp blade in there, and it takes forever. This is reasonably priced. It's a leaf blower. And when you open this up and it's full of sawdust, it blows it right out. Now, some of this is wet, so it's stuck, but it's mostly done. The clamps on the 122, you don't have the option of getting cam clamps. You got these screw-on clamps. These handles, normally, the handles on these 
go all the way to the end are easy to spin around but if you're down here and I am often because I'm mostly doing small wood bang 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 drives me nuts so I tape them up that was an easy fix the problem is when you're down at the very bottom of the log that sharp point has to go in as close to the bottom as you can get it without splitting the wood out. And I have to remember to leave this level and <laughs> not sticking up. Even so, if I'm cutting that last board one inch, it scares me watching the blade cross this. I've seen it flick sawdust off of this as it's going by, cutting a one inch blade when this is as low as I can get it. So, it needs an improvement. My first attempt at an improvement was this. And that's one of the problems with it. It falls in the mud all the time. You have to come out here with a big magnet to find it again. The way this works is, got the little hole on back right at the bottom. Put the point in there. You see this is a real pain in the butt. And then, when I tighten this, that point is right in the bottom eighth of an inch of that cant. Level this handle, and now I can go down an inch in perfect safety. The improvement I have in mind is a bigger, heavier L-shaped metal, and a short piece of pipe, three-quarter inch steel pipe will do it. This is about 5 eighths diameter. Weld that onto the back of the L and just slip that over this so I don't have to sit there with my fingers and dropping again in the mud and all that stuff. I'll let you know how that goes. Oh, yes. Amazing the number of things I didn't write down. Distance markers on the log stops. So if I'm going to cut down to 4 inches, I know this has got to be under 4 inches. Did that on the long ones and the short ones. And... I made a bunch of wooden stops, sacrificial. I uh, ran into a steel log stop early on in my sawmilling career. Saw blade does not like to cut through steel at all. So I made some wooden ones. Normally this guard bumps into the log stop before the blade gets there and tells you you got a log stop in the way. I was milling some large redwood logs and I needed every bit of space I could get so I had to turn this up out of the way and sure enough hit the log stop. So now anytime I have to cut large wood or for any other reason if I have to turn this guard up I use wooden stops. I don't remember whose channel I saw this on. The start handle on the Kohler engine is in a very bad position. It's over there Next to the choke and the start lever, when it flies out of your hand, it hits those levers. All you have to do is remove these three bolts and you can turn the starter any way you like. It's much easier to start from the right side for a right-handed person. So thank you, whoever that was. That's all I have for now. There's more that I could add, but I'm still in the process of getting, getting things fixed, getting things better organized. Um, we could go on and on about this damn winch forever, but we won't. If you're still with me, thanks for watching.